So for our next example, we have the compound inequality, 3 less than or equal to 2x plus 1, and 2x plus 1 is less than 9. And as we needed to do in the last example, we'll solve each inequality for x first. So doing that in the first inequality, uh, if we subtract 1 from each side, we have then 2 less than or equal to 2x. And dividing by 2, we have 1 is less than or equal to x. And for the next inequality, subtracting 1, we have 2x is less than 8. And then dividing by 2, we have x then is less than 4. Now what we might do uh, with that first inequality is to rewrite it with x on the left-hand side, which is quite often where most of us are a little bit more comfortable seeing it. So we'll have x then is greater than or equal to 1. And x is less than 4. And what we'll do next then is to translate each of those inequalities into the appropriate interval. And so for the first inequality, we can rewrite that then as bracket 1 comma infinity. And you'll notice the bracket around the 1 because it is included. And we'll change the and to the intersection symbol. And then x less than 4 will become the interval negative infinity then to 4, but not including 4. So now we'll next graph each of those with respect to the number line. Now you'll see each of those intervals graphed below. And I think you'll agree that the interval where they overlap would be uh, between 1 and 4, including the 1, but not the 4. And so that, then you'll see, is graphed in red there on the number line itself. So if we express the solution in interval notation, then we would have in bracket 1, comma 4, parentheses. And if we choose to write it in set builder notation, then we would have the set of all x such that 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 4. And we're all done.